this is our last minute gift session. Let's talk about some of, this is the second go of our last minute uh, gift session. We have even less time to <laughs> Yeah, less time for this session as well. Uh, so we're going to have to get through some some stuff a little faster yeah. than normal. But uh, let's start off with showing off some of our favorite uh, last minute gifts that we chose. I chose three. Sean chose four. We were supposed to choose three. He went extra. Um, so let's hop over to my screen. I'll just run There's through these real so quick. There's so many good projects on Shaper Hub. Exactly. If for those of you that don't know, this is Shaper Hub. This is where you go to find all of the projects that people that our loving community has created and here are a couple of our highlights so first one for me we have this awesome folding cutting board with internal knife storage uh, might be a little bit longer a project but it's so cool like if you have a friend that is super into camping um, or just likes uh, cooking on the go I think this is a really great gift you can even personalize it with a uh, either an inlay or an engraving. Um, I get you could use labs to create your own engraving instead of using this person's. We'll or show that in a little bit. Yeah, or just find a friend that whose name starts with S. And like me. Yeah, and like give Sean. it to me. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then get yourself a cool Wustoff knife. I think that's Wustoff. Anyways, great project. Um, and, of course, use your favorite uh, cutting board safe finish on it. These ones are also super cool, and this to me really highlights the uh, the essence of a last minute gift. Uh, granted, I don't know if this person went out and actually cut each of these ply boo coasters, but let's say you went out and found standard ply boo coasters at a store, and you wanted to make them a little bit more special by doing like an awesome array of Picasso drawings on them, like this, and just taking it to that next level. Again, you're you're not stressing over material. You're just finding pre-made things, whether it be a cutting board or coasters, things like that, and putting your own spin on it, which I think is very much in the essence of last-minute, hacky, wonderful gifts. Last one for me, this was a couple years ago, is this cookie press. I think it is a pretty killer example of Origin's fine detail capability. We're using a super small bit. I believe it's a 16th cutter, 16th of an inch cutter, and our engraving bit to create these like sharp little lines that leave really nice indentations into cookies. And we turned a nice maple handle and fit it in there. But super cool. Yeah, great project for like small precision work and also fitment of the handle with offset techniques. Yeah. Um, nice picks, nice picks, Jake. Thank you, thank you. All right, now now mine. Uh, this one is my first one. This is uh, Brian Ekins. He he actually worked on the Fusion plugin as well. So if you're a Fusion 360 user, you should check that out. It exports 3D files uh, out to Shaper Origin files, uh, SVG files, really quickly. You don't have to even think about it. Um, but he built this one this year. And I thought it was pretty awesome. Uh, you know, quick project, very simple. You can make a bunch of them very quickly, which, you know, if you're like me, have a bunch of family members, you can't just make one project. You gotta make one for everybody or people start feeling left out. Uh, so you can make a bunch for everybody. Uh, it looks like he went to town, I think, and Love just this. made them all. Uh, but, you know, some great links in here for getting pegs. But, you know, this is one of the things where last minute uh, gifts, you know, can't wait on shipping at this point. Anything like that, you know, you're, you're gonna wanna get it in your shop and working. So I was like, you could use a dowel, you could find some metal pins and cut those, uh, a little bit cut off. You know, there's, there's options. And I think that this project really lends itself to being able to do something quickly. So that's my first one. And then, you know, like Jake said, you gotta do more coasters. Coasters I mean, are just this such is, a good go-to. It's a great Christmas uh, and holiday project. So. This one is a moose drink holder. You know, me and Jake were arguing about the validity of having a through hole in the middle of a coaster. <laughs> uh, you know, well, it's a nice table. Uh, what if a drop gets in there? But Beauty of Origin, you can take that design file. Uh, I'll just show you a preview here. And you choose how deep to cut it. So maybe you would want to go halfway through and uh, fill it with uh, some other thing. Uh, Paint, resin. Plastic. Uh, maybe something nicer, like, uh, you know. A uh, nice aluminum inlay or something. Uh, aluminium. Aluminium. Mm. Uh, so this is one that I think is really cool. And, you know, I think this is one where you could set up a nice jig on the workstation, pop a piece in there, 
maybe you cut ev all the exterior parts out uh, with traditional tools and then you just make a jig to cut out the middle uh, yep. so you could do a bunch really quickly yep next up classic uh, this is the heart box uh, this is a very simple little box uh, but just beautiful and really easy to make uh, you know a little nice treasure box for someone very fast you can just pocket down some material cut the profile and you're done I did uh, want to mention one cool thing that I'll show a little bit later is you know these are different thicknesses uh, and one thing you can do is actually cut it out of the same thickness material and then pocket down this side so when you cut this piece it's actually much thinner to start with and you know you can obviously plane it down a bigger piece and or solve it many different ways but with origin you could probably pocket this area down uh, right on the workstation and save yourself a little bit of time because yeah. at this point saving time is the name of the game exactly I have a little uh, a packaging tip on things like this just an idea I'm sure you've probably seen it but if you have a complementary wood species like so for this little cherry box um, if you have a piece of scrap maple or ash laying around get your bench plane put it up on end get a, a couple of like really nice curls off of it and use that as your mm, packaging classy material. oh it's beautiful presentation uh, I did that for family members last year year before last and it was like a from well from Jake with love yeah and it's a biodegradable filler that's right <laughs> you know don't have to ship plastic all over the world we can just you know you can ship me sawdust and then I'll burn it in the fire there you go afterwards yeah Okay, uh, next up, and this is maybe my favorite. This is the bear coin bank. Uh, as you can see here, it's a little bank. It's classic. It's so good. Uh, now, tricky one here. You need some clear material in your shop. And, you know, if you're like me, you're hoarding every material you get your hands on. Uh, and so acrylic, uh, polycarbonate maybe, if you can find a clear enough one. There, there's a few different, like, uh, pieces of... Uh, clear material that you can cut with origin if you get the right bit um, you know looking for like an O flute or I find that the eighth inch uh, bit that we have can cut uh, plastics decently if you get the right speeds and feeds yeah just turn it down make sure you're not melting it yeah ideally I, you get an O flute I would say don't use the the larger quarter inch bit uh, but the eighth inch is not too bad um, so yeah O flute's your best bet and you can uh, probably find those we have them somewhere yeah um, but yeah, it's a single flute that goes all the way down. Really good for plastic uh, cutting. All right, those are my four picks. Cool. All right, so. Ah. Yes, we have, uh, we're being told that because we failed you, we owe you all an extra giveaway this time. So reminder, we are doing giveaways. We're gonna do an extra giveaway. Hashtag shape or make, yep. that's how we're doing it this time? Yeah. Hashtag shape made in the comments. That's how you get your name on the wheel, which we will be spending. We will be spin, uh, spinning the wheel at the end and giving away all kinds of sweet stuff. Yeah. So, so thanks for sticking it out with us. Yeah. And well, we have some good ones. Today, we do so have some good ones. Stick around. All right. So these were our picks on Shaper Hub. Uh, let's uh, move on to a couple new projects that we want to go over really quickly. Something that just came out. Still time to make these. Uh, so yeah, the first one. Is this trivet? This is the Correlate trivet from our friend Leia. Leia. You may know her from the previous lamp project that yeah. we published not too long ago. That beautiful lamp, that same level of attention is here in this trivet. It's a really gorgeous design. Again, we uh, didn't have time to do it out of hardwood, but I'm definitely going to come back to this design and make one. Well, I, I built it out of plywood because there were a few people in the community when oh, it came out yesterday gorgeous. and said, I don't have uh, hardwood that's eight and a half inches thick. My joiner's six inches wide. So how do I get material that's eight? Well, you can glue it up, but this looks much better uh, if you don't have a seam going down, I think. So right. this is an option, uh, yeah. you know, and you can pick whatever material thickness you want. That's a that's a key tip this 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 week. Find projects that don't need specific material thickness because Truth. then you can use whatever you have in your shop. So with this project, you can actually, as long as it, it really doesn't matter how thick it is. I would say half an inch is the minimum, but you could go up, you could go a little less and change it up, up a little bit. So this is a nice little option uh, for people. That's uh, available on Shaper Hub as a community project. So go ahead and check that out if you're looking for a nice design. Uh, you know, one of the things we've talked about 
in the past uh, last minute uh, holiday projects uh, session, which I think was last year, was how do you um, how do you basically get these done? And the big key part is if you have these files that are already ready, and your your job is to get in the workshop and build them. If you're thinking about designs, if you're thinking about building and prototyping, it can take a lot longer. You know, five couple hours in the shop turns into a day, a couple days. Yep, still don't have anything. So start start with one of these projects, and and it'll happen much faster. And and that's why uh, these designers are throwing up these beautiful designs like this, so that people can uh, take advantage of them and give them away as gifts, make them for themselves, uh, etc. So this one's out. Uh, there's a beautiful PDF that you can download from the project on the project page. Maybe Goose will go over my computer for a second. Uh, here's the Shaper Hub project. You can see some like really nice things there's even a little personalization on the bottom it's that you could such you a could do gorgeous design i really love the bottom where you can see the uh lines from the top but the top is this really beautiful uh piece here and then of course it grows in size so the middle line is much skinnier and the thicker one is on the outside and it has this beautiful uh thing so yeah if you have some questions if you make one post it in the community and uh that is the correlate trivet by leia all right Next, Next up, we the brush. The brush. The bench brush. So this is Aspen's uh, bench brush. It's a very uh, cool project. Maybe not quite last minute, but I wanted to mention it anyways for people. Um, essentially, it's a, a project where you use origin and traditional hand tools to construct this brush. So, uh, you know, if we go over to the bench cam here, Goose, I'll kind of show a quick one. You start by taking a jig in the fixture, and then you cut these cool facets around the edge, and then you use traditional shaping tools to get to something like that. Um, it's a really cool project. There's some videos where Aspen walks you through processes about how it works, and overall, it's just a really fun little uh, beautiful brush you can give away. Little maybe past the the last minute uh, holiday gift session, but this can you be your big one, or if, like you know, if yeah. Or if you know you really, really got a little hustle going on, you could probably get it done in in time. Yeah. You know? Or make a couple. Once you get the jigs figured out, it's pretty uh, that's pretty true. fast, which is great. So that's, true. that's the bench brush. Uh, it's available on Shaper Hub as well. So moving right along. Cool. Uh, of course, there's the uh, the classic. Uh, old project that we put out years ago is just a stack of cutting boards a uh, bunch of different shapes the idea is that you just grab the shape that you like the best and sorry my audio is clipping um, grab the shape that you like the best you could scale it to whatever size you want depending on the size of your material and you can start customizing from there uh, this is one of my favorites it's what we did last year you could just customize it using on tool CAD or now you yeah. have labs so you can really customize it and make it super cool put some cool logos on it really put some nice fonts on it yeah uh, you know design your own little shapes whatever whatever floats your boat uh how do how do you want to define labs ah that's a good point so we're going to show know. it shortly but uh you know maybe we should just show it now um, sure. just real quick so if, if you're not aware uh we have a new thing and i'm going to delete these just so we don't have them. This is Shaper Labs. It's a really simple design program. Uh, currently, it's a kind of an experimental platform. So things are uh, changing. Uh, this is available to anyone who owns Origin, and it, it makes stuff really simple. So, like uh, you were talking about putting a little logo on here. So let's just quickly jump in here, and I'm gonna kill this, and let's let's search for something really quick. Uh, let's do. Uh, Slay. Slay. I don't even know how to spell that, Jake. <laughs> That's what I asked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a speller, okay? So, okay, so here, we, we just searched Slay, and now we can pick through all these images. Uh, I think this one's pretty classy. Uh, and now you can see that we have a Slay. Now, this is uh, really simple. Uh, I can just quickly name it and save it and export it right over to Origin, and it's cuttable. Um, I can also go and clean it up a little bit. I could add something to it. I could add some little presents if I wanted to make, you know, if I wanted to fill up the sleigh with presents, I could make a little, uh, you know, something like this and just plop this in and rotate the angles. And I could fill that up with presents and we could kind of add that all together and we'll, we'll show that in a little bit. Uh, and, and that's lab. So 
labs.shapertools.com. This will help you and, and you know, really great for personalizing stuff. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so that's uh, labs. Cool. All right. Um, now, now the, time for the real. Yeah, the stuff that we've been working on specifically for this holiday season. Last minute, by the way. Our last minute gifts. I worked on one of them yesterday. Yeah, I think I just put, put my last coat of finish on last night. Nice. Um, we did a series of frames, picture frames. So we, d we each kind of took our own spin on picture frames. Um, I have these two, which go off of your kind of traditional six inch by four inch printed photo. Very classy with the with the little hardware on the back. Yeah. Um, and the idea around these frames were using some fun joinery. It was kind of also for the person that may not have uh, a miter saw and all those kind of things. You have Origin and you have Workstation. What could you do with just that? A lot. Uh, so this particular design is uh, thickness or width specific. Uh, and it's a, one of the digital joints. I can put it up here if you want to show that. So that is like, I, I call it the jigsaw miter. Um, really cool design, comes together beautifully. But this one is totally scalable and that's why I designed it. So you go to the store, you pick up whatever kind of framing material you could find. Um, and Or that's already in your shop. Maybe? Or that's already in your shop, yeah. but again, you know, Oh, that's right. The idea is you don't have much. You're working with what you could find at, mm. a, at a store. This is originally designed for inch and three-eighths wide material. Um, but I can come down to this camera, just show off. I call it the wiggle miter. The wiggle miter, these uh, are actually undercut. So this joint's holding itself together, plus a little bit of glue, and it's not going anywhere. Um, you can adjust the scale of it just with the on tool scale feature on origin so if your material is two inches you just adjust the scale to two inches and it, everything will adjust uh, for itself so those are two projects that i just posted uh super fun again easy all done on workstation on the shelf i go try it out yeah files are available on chamber hub yeah. for you it's a single click to get it on the tool and uh yeah excited to see it yeah, it's Ted put it in the chat. Yeah, nice. Okay. I even used labs to personalize just a little bit of oh, you did little engravings on the front. And we're gonna we're gonna show how that works in a in a few minutes actually. Yeah. All right. So you're also in the vein of the, in the in the frame game, huh? I did. I, well, I was like, if you're doing frames, I'm gonna do frames too. So uh, I went a little different route. You know, you know, we live in a world of digital everything. So. Let, let's get back to our roots, uh, you know, printed pictures. If you remember these things, uh, you can take hey. pictures on your phone or whatever and print them out. Or in some cases, you can actually even... I think it's called a Polaroid. I think it is. So a simple photo. Uh, and I just built a nice little frame that holds a bunch of them. So it's, it's kind of cool to be able to stack some of the photos behind it which is is great and it's got little magnets on it so for a fridge for something that's in your shop on metal uh it's a really nice little project and i love the fact that you know you can put a bunch of, of photos in the back and then rotate them every month or two or whenever you get sick of looking at the top one so we're going to show a little bit of the process of the first one uh since we haven't cut anything yet and then we'll show some personalization yeah and just uh, there are now two of these up on Shaper Hub. The smaller one is for ah, Instax Mini. So this is like uh, this is a smaller f uh, camera. It produces pretty small like Polaroid size things. And then we have the standard Polaroid size now. So classic. If you have a classic one or a new one, you know we got files for both. Uh, so you don't have to deal with it. Uh, and, and you know one of the things I may, might quickly show it since we're here actually is you know sometimes you might uh think how do you how does how does sean get to the, this point and <laughs> i'll tell you it's all these uh so we know origin is great about prototyping and building stuff directly on tool now we have labs you can do it there quickly i actually designed these in labs which is cool and i'm going to take you through that in a minute uh but you know even when you're trying to make fitment work even when you're trying to figure out is it you know what's the size how does the mag how do the magnets fit where how many can i fit in here it, it can take some time so you know 
if you have time, feel free to do that, but we're trying to make it easy for you. Uh, skip all of these parts and go directly to something that actually works. So that is uh, a little kind of tidbit on prototyping. So now I think let's, uh, let's get to cutting. Yeah. So I'll quickly show you, if you haven't actually seen how this works, yeah, we can cut to my screen, Goose. Uh, so we just go here. Uh, you can always search through uh, just clicking up in the search bar. And I t I called mine Instax Frame, so I'm just going to search for that. And if you click on the project, uh, here it is. You can see you know some photos, some install instructions, etc. cetera, uh, kind of instructions on how to do it. But really all you care about is this blue button. Clicking that's going to send that fi those files right to your machine. So now that we have that, we can jump over to the origin cam. And I'm gonna just go ahead and quickly tape this up. So we have a, uh, we have a small, um, small piece of material. This is like a nice scrap that I have in the bin, uh, half an inch. You could do it with pretty much whatever you want as well, which is nice. Uh, some of this project is just about making it easy on us. Uh, so I'm just gonna put some tape down. This is one where, you know, when you finish cutting, there's not a whole lot of surface area afterwards. So it's good to have a little bit more tape than I normally use, because it's actually a pretty small piece that's left over when I finish cutting. So I'm just gonna, now, uh, if we're looking at the top here, I'm gonna actually just pull off of the edge a little bit. I'm not actually gonna butt up to here, because I'm, I'm gonna cut closer to here, not on the outside. So I will do that, and I'm just gonna leave enough space where the bit can get down there. I'm not gonna have to worry about hitting the, hitting the edge of this. And also I will show you a quick cool thing about the grid system. So if people haven't seen that before. So now we're here and I'll, I'll go ahead and start a new scan. Let me get my hair out of here before I forget actually. I'm gonna start a new scan and we're just gonna make sure that we scan this area in so that we have everything in one spot. Okay, so. Now that I have it scanned in, I'll just quickly scan this in. Yes. All right, so we're saving our scan, easy as that. Uh, and now you'll see, you know, I'm a little bit off of the edge here so my bit can get in there. And in this case, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and swap out the bit for a probing bit, just so we get a nice edge on this grid. And that's as simple as pulling the spindle out, a couple twists of the wrench. And for those who haven't actually done it, just need to grab the uh, engraving bit that comes with Origin. I'll bring it over to the camera here so people can see. And the pointed bit part is actually gonna go inside of the spindle here. And I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna really tighten down, just hand tight and install this back here. And now I have this perfect setup to be able to touch the edge of the material and define where that wooden piece is. So I'll go ahead and click grid. I'll hit the green button to make a new grid. Any action that's in the bottom here can be done by clicking the button so I don't have to touch the screen. And I first lower the bit. So I'll just lower this down until I can touch it and set my depth. So I'm gonna go ahead and lightly touch my material and you'll notice there's a line on the top of the bit. I actually want to measure from the bottom of the bit since my material is on the bottom. Touch that once, and now you can see it is referencing the bottom. So I'll probe that once. And now as I drag, you'll see the grid being created. You can even zoom out a little bit to get a better picture where you're at. And then I'll touch lightly there. And then I will come over to here and touch the side. And because I'm on the outside of those two probes, it's automatically gonna know that I wanna go onto the left side of the bit, which is a pretty cool little feature. So I don't even have to take my hands off to do that. Okay, so now we have a grid defined. And that means I can quickly place files and I'll know it'll be right on the edge of that material. So at that point, I just quickly take out the spindle, swap it back for a cutting bit. And one of the things I did with this file is I designed it for cutting with a quarter inch bit. Uh, sometimes, you know, you're gonna want tighter radiuses. And if you have a larger bit, your radius will be much larger than if you have a smaller bit. So in this file, I kind of designed it to be as fast as possible using a larger bit. And even though this is a small frame, 
there's a little trick we can do. So I'll, I'll mention that as we go through. So now... I honestly like it too with that radius. I think it looks good. I think the radius looks okay. It looks good enough. And it actually saves you a lot of time because you don't have to change bits halfway through the project True. and do all that. So yeah, maybe Jake can show it off in this camera here. So you can see how they're a little round in the corners, even though the, the photo is actually not as round, but I kind of pulled in the edges a little bit to cover that and then trying to pick a nice quarter inch radius uh, so that it looks nice there. All right, so now we have our grid and it's pretty simple. I c one thing about this, and if we go back to the bench cam real quick, you'll see in the bottom of the image here, there's actually quite a bit of, uh, quite a bit of important area as far as uh, how it visually looks. And so like as far as this one, you can see I actually picked right where it goes and, and that takes a little bit of uh, moving the, the file around so that I get the perfect type of uh, look on the other side. Now, one thing that's interesting is I'm actually not cutting on the top. I'm, I'm actually going to cut this out the other way. So I'm going to cut right. down on all this, and that is actually the bottom. So if you, if you really want to figure out where this is, you'll have to locate the area you want it to be on, mark it, mark all the way around, and then when you flip it, you'll know that the file's going there. So that's just a little tip. You can also just place it wherever. Uh, but if you have figured wood, it's nice to pick a, 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 a pleasing area. In this case, I'm just going to put it on the corner and, uh, and that'll be okay for this. So let's go ahead and import. Uh, one quick thing, maybe we should go over. This is pretty uh, exciting. So we just shipped uh, kind of a small update on the website uh, for the new hardware that library. And I wanted to quickly show one feature that people may have not have seen right on tool. So now, without uh, having to update your origin or anything, when you go to import, you're actually gonna see a couple new things. One is you're gonna see premium projects have joined the rest of your files. So if you have a premium project like the candle holder or the bench brush, they'll show up right here at the top level. Uh, and then also we have a new thing called recent files. So clicking recent files is just a list of like the 50 or so most recent projects you've done and they will show up right here. So if you, or organizing your files, nested folders. Uh, when you upload them, they'll just appear right here and you don't have to go search for them. So in this case, they're right here. Uh, so what I want, there's actually two pieces. There's a, there's a, there's a frame and then there's a magnet insert. Uh, so I'm, we're gonna cut the frame today and I'll just talk about the magnet afterwards. So here's the frame. I'm gonna button my shirt up too so that it doesn't get caught in anything. Safety if, first. If you don't everyone. have any magnets yet, buy some magnets because they're good to have around. You know what? I don't have uh, any ear protection either, Jake. So I will be right back. Okay. Um, I, I actually just got a, an array of different sizes of magnets because if you need to throw a magnet in something, just take a pair of calipers and measure it and create an on-tool circle right there and then. And you can embed that magnet really okay. easily. Totally. No, I think having a bunch of magnets at your disposal is great. Oh, yeah. uh, okay, so here's the file. You'll see as I move around, uh, no matter how I rotate the tool, it's still staying snapped to that, that grid that I created. So now I can go ahead and pick an anchor. I really want to reference that top left corner and I just need to place it right up in this zero zero. Now, I could give me myself a little bit of extra space by just putting it here. Uh, and that's probably what I'll do. I'll actually give me a little extra space anyway. Just Yeah, where'd you put that double-sided tape, too? I did. I put it over here. Mm -hmm. So so we're all good. That's one thing. You know, you want to make sure your double-sided tape's in a spot where it's going to reach. Now, what you'll notice if you look at this screen is the edge of the workstation comes to here for my material board. So I'm going to flip it around because that's the most, uh, that has the most area. So let me just flip that real quick, 180 degrees. And then I'll just change the anchor to the top left again. And now I'll have that a little bit more uh, surface area on the bottom there. Okay, so I'm going to move it right there, and we're going to start cutting. So I've already I've already actually encoded this for the right uh, colors. The inside pocket. I actually this is an interesting one. Uh, a little pro tip: if you have something that you're going to need to be cutting back and forth a couple of times, sometimes I'll put two files there, and then I'll put one that's encoded as an inside cut and one that's encoded as a pocket, so I don't have to change this file. Uh, you know, I can change all the paths, but in this case, I'm, I'm going to do a bunch of them, so I'll just go ahead and set every piece that I need to cut. So, my strategy, we'll talk through that real quick, is to cut the inside of this frame and free that center piece. Then I'll pocket down that main area. I'll do an inside cut to clean it up, and then we'll go out here and we'll do a finished cut. Beautiful.
So, Jake, maybe you can kind of explain what I'm doing as I'm doing it, and I'll uh, crank this out real quick. All right. I'll step away for the sake of sound. Don't forget to see touch. <laughs> All right. Now he could have could have gone about this two different ways. He could pocket out that tire inside, or he could do it like he is doing it, which is just cutting that whole se center portion out to a final depth. Saves you a little bit of time and a little bit of extra sawdust rather than pocketing the whole back shape. I like too that, you know, you're kind of placing it rather blind because if we're working on the back of this project, might even be worth scoping out what your grain looks like on the on the front face and making some marks that will show up in your scan to help you place that file a little bit more accurately and uh, nail nail that nail that grain that you're looking for all right starting on our inside cut now Goose, if you're talking to me, I can't hear you. All right, and looks like final pass coming up. Now we're pocketing that last little bit of material out. Just a reminder on pocketing, it's really the only time that Origin acts like a normal router in the sense that you can travel in whatever direction that you want to, which means it will actually let you climb cut, or you, you traditionally if you're following along a cut path, it won't allow you to climb cut. That's very intentional. So just be cautious when you're doing pockets that you are, in fact, not climb cutting as best as you can. Down to, working our way down to our final depth. I love this gift too because you can't make copies of a Polaroid. So you just gotta you know, if you're sending these out to family and friends, say you're sending family photos, you just got to take a bunch of spontaneous Polaroids and send them to grandma and grandpa and so on. You got a roughing pass on that outside cut. Always, always, always start with a roughing pass, at least in my book. I never go into something at zero offset. Always make sure I have at least a .02. That's a positive .02 offset. One more depth pass, go all the way through. Goose just told me something that I find kind of hilarious. Apparently you can now convert your, your smartphone photos into Polaroids and somebody will print them. So there's that option. <laughs> Hello.
How was that? Great. Uh, I wanted to pause before I fully remove it and mention one little thing. So this is a kind of a key tip that I learned while prototyping. I'm going to just take this photo out of this one here real quick. So we've now cut the inside, the final thickness. Uh, it's a, it's a finished. The outside is still roughed out. I haven't finished it, but I'm doing this now because I'm not going to be able to test fit this and, and see if it fits until, uh, once I get it out. So I kind of made the file kind of to be a little bit wider than everything, but you'll see here, it's a little bit, uh, it's a little tight, I would say. So, you know, how are you going to get that out? <laughs> oh, it'll come out. It'll come out. <laughs> yeah. This is my, my first time, Jakey. Uh, but one thing that was, was, is cool. And I'm just going to show you this right now, uh, is if this, and it's actually interesting because the Fuji film has a lot rounder corner than the Polaroid. So when I cut the Fuji film, there was a little bit of uh, room for it to breathe and I made it a little bigger. But when I cut the Polaroid, I realized that it actually was too big. So if I grab this one, I'll actually show you here. I actually put some little dog bones on the corner of these here, right directly on tool. And I didn't modify the file, I just did it on tool. So. I'll show you how to do this really quickly. Uh, super simple and kind of great for little things like this. We could choose to chisel it out if we were feeling really of course. creative uh, in one of those corners, but I I'm actually okay with this today. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna make the offset a little negative and I'm gonna say 0 0.004, so four thousandths of an inch and I'll make sure it's negative. And that means it's going outside the shape I intend to cut. And if you highlight the corner, you'll start seeing the edge appear. And, and so we're going to make it a little bigger because it's not appearing yet, but let's try 0 0.01, actually. Uh, da -da. We've got to go a little more, 0.05. Okay, and I'll hit select to grab. Now, you can see I'm starting to protrude outside the corner. So now if I plunge cut here, uh, and I'm not going to move the tool, I'm just going to plunge and then come back, and I'll show you how that works. So turn this on, make sure my depth is right. those corners are relieved and it sits nice and flush. Um, so maybe not the most beautiful backside appearance, but it's okay. It's going up against the fridge. It's going up. No one's going to really uh, see that. So that's a little trick to have in your toolbox for any time you need a little bit of relief on a, on a corner. Okay. So now let's just cut it free and uh, this project will be done. So I'm going to just go to my final depth, 0.5 and a zero offset. I'm going to go ahead and clean it. And you'll see when I cut this, I'm going to be a little careful about how I come in and out of the cut especially when I come back into the final cut, because you know, if, if the double side tape's not down, in this case, I have some area that's not uh, down. It has a tendency to move sometimes. So I'm just gonna be very slowly and careful when I go do that final little area. The other options, you could leave tabs while you're running it. So I could you know, start, start here, run all the way around. When I come over to here, I could retract, move origin up just a tiny bit, plunge again, go around, and then retract before I get to my final thing. Uh, and then chisel that out uh, however I like. But in this case, I'm, I'm going for it. So it's, uh, I don't have time for that anymore, Jake. It's, it's, it's it. holiday time. I always think about what happens, what's the best place I can start this cut just in case it were to cut loose on me. Where is going to be the easiest point for me to to fix a little bit of leftover material that wasn't cut all the way through? Beautiful. Oh, you know, we got, oh no, it's, it's, it's all good. It's yeah, all if good. you can just get that, that up. That. 
Look, I cut perfect depth, so I didn't even cut through the through the the, the tape. It's already there. Wow. Peel a little peeling off of that tape and a little hit with some sawdust or uh, sandpaper. I mean, probably don't. We're probably done all the sawdusting we need to do today. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if it came through, but our original uh, intro, we had saw sawdust with fake snow. So we have one that perfectly matches. Um, it's actually a little customized because I chose to not do that on the other ones. Nice. Now, uh, now same thing we would do uh, with this project. You know, I would do that side first, and then I would come back over to uh, the workstation with the other piece and cut this little piece out here uh, this is a cool little section where you you know import the file place it down actually I'm not gonna cut it but I'll show you quickly how I would do it because there's a little tip I want to get off so go see here's a nice thing of recent files just takes me right back I have all my files at my fingertips I uh, will select that one and now I just place it in the same one this is an interesting little tidbit but the grain direction I really want to go the other way so I'm gonna rotate this file 90 degrees so it runs with the long grain. I can place it right next to that one. Now, we mentioned earlier, what do you do if you need multiple thicknesses? And the way this is built is, you know, you can put as many of these pictures in depending on how deep you pocket uh, and how deep this piece is. Cool thing about this piece is it kind of keeps some pressure on the middle, pushing the photo in the front just a tiny bit, uh, but you need to get that right. So. What I would do is either I'd plane some material down to a quarter inch, or I would just use Origin to pocket down a little bit of material here. So I would just go to Create, draw a rectangle, and I'm just gonna make a big rectangle that fits around that. And now if I go to Cut Mode, I can change that to a pocket, and I can just set my depth to a quarter inch, because I know this is half inch material and I can literally pocket this area down. And then when I go to cut this out, I'll have the right thickness there. Uh, there's other ways to do it, obviously, but this is kind of That's a quick, super handy way to do it. It's, you know, if you got a little piece and you're trying to figure out how to get it smaller, you know, this is a great little trick. So, uh, but while you're cutting this, so you pocket it down, get it the right size. Now we go over and do the uh, magnet hole. So quick cut on those. And what I like to do is keep a stack of magnets uh, kind of stacked up like this. And after I cut using Helix, I can quickly just see if that fit is working and where I want it to be. If it's not, I'll open the, the uh, offset a negative, make it a little bigger of a hole, fit it until I like it, you know, put some, uh, s scuff it up a little bit, throw some uh, CA glue in there. And you know, now your magnets are fitting. Don't do that until you fully cut it out because it will get attached to Yes, things, but yeah, uh, you can at least fit it while you're cutting and then I like to just figure out the right settings and then cut five or six of them. Um, this is kind of a fun project. If you set it up in the right way, you can gain cut maybe uh, five or six on the workstation and, and that way, you know, as you're going from piece to piece, you're not resetting your settings. You cut everything to a quarter, then you go to the next piece, you cut everything deeper. Uh, and then when you're in, when you're done, you have five or uh, five or six pieces that are done like uh, yeah. above. So. That is that little project, and as you can see, pretty fast. Do you think we have time to do a quick customization on that? I think we do, and this is kind of one of the cool things because... You can leave that on there. Can well, if we do that, how are we going to customize uh, the front of this frame, Jake? Uh, that's true. So this is kind of a cool double-sided cut, uh, and we're really leaning on the grid uh, system that we've set up because while he's getting the file ready, I'm going to get this thing ready. Yeah, go ahead and cut over to my screen. I'm going to ask you a couple things about that file. Sure. For one, let's start fresh. We're going to go ahead and make a shape. I'm going to make a rectangle. But I'm going to change the shape of this rectangle. Our width is... I'm going to decouple that. All right, so you want the width first. Yeah, or just give me the calipers. Okay, yeah. If you don't have a good pair of uh, digital calipers yet, that's what you should be asking for for the holidays. That's what you should be asking for for the holidays. All right. First dimension, 2.55.55 is my width. And my height is 3.9. This is also another pro tip. 
if you're working on last minute holiday gifts, find someone to work with you in the shop. They can be designing while you're changing the spindle, getting your setup ready. By yeah. the time you're ready, you're ready to cut. There you go. All right, so this is the outline of my of our frame here. I want to give myself an idea of the usable the usable space, which is the little section below that I have to engrave something on. That is 0.9 tall. So 0.9 and what was that other dimension we said? Two point yep. five five. And I'm gonna snap this. Boom. Right there. So this is really just a guide that I'm using, but we have this is our shape. This is our usable space down here. Now let's have some fun. I want to start off with a snowflake. Keep it real real traditional here. And we have all kinds of options for snowflakes. Let's, I'm happy with that one. I'm going to set that to the side for right now because I want to start with text. Just click off of it. And add a little text. Say something along those lines. Mm, very fitting for my hat today. Yes, exactly. And we have a couple options. Oh, that's perfect. That's nice. I bring that down adjust that slightly, just give it some pizzazz. You better give me a little less rotation so we have some room to breathe. That's true. There we go, there we go. And then uh, I bring that, whoops. Your zoom is so sensitive. <laughs> My trackpad might be turned up a uh -huh. little bit. <laughs> And I'm going to bring this in. I just love how easy it is to adjust shapes like on the fly and just uh, dial in exactly. Ooh, actually. Oh, yeah, nice. I'm going to have it Ooh, come off, off the edge a little bit. Okay. That's, that's fancy. Why not? Okay. All right. So, with that being said, I'm trying to think. Let me think through one little thing real quick, actually. You cannot. No, but you can snap it up here. Oh, that's true. Yeah, okay. This yeah. is this is some So we were all yeah. deliberating on how is this gonna how's this gonna snap, but we're just gonna use this anchor point right up here. Does that make anyone happen? That makes it happen. Alright, so all right. now the only thing we need to do before we save it is update that text a little bit with Shapeshifter. A magical uh, thing so if we go ahead and click the text and then shape shift that you'll actually see that text sometimes comes in with a few of the wrong lines so we're just going to select all the things we want and leave all the things we don't want alone and this is an amazing little feature of labs where you can just quickly get the things you want and delete what you don't well. and now we have a perfect little file ready for us right uh, we could actually even better we could select this and this. Oh, not that. We could select this and this, and we can shape shift that. We can that, and we'll keep all the existing shapes in this state. So there we have that. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna delete this one. Isn't that neat? Isn't that neat? <laughs> okay. So all right, let's save it. Yeah, let's save it. Uh, I'm already signed in here to to Sean's account, so I just hit that save, save to Shaper Hub, and that is gonna magically show up after on I do Sean's a scan. origin. After once I do a scan, yeah, once he scans and grids. I, I wanted to quickly come down here for a second too. A, a little interesting pro tip for people. So people always think that the tape is kind of what aligns things, but really that's just a reference. So in this case, I specifically put my piece uh, at kind of a 45 to the tape, and we're gonna create a grid on here, and that has nothing to do with this line or anything. So really all it is is, I'm just showing you, you can grid off any three uh, points, and it doesn't matter how it's oriented. So this can sometimes help you in weird projects or things where you're maybe thinking, okay, how do I align this and that? Just make a grid off of it, and that becomes a perfect little system for Origin to work with. So go ahead and 
kick back a new scan real quick. Okay. And then I put the pro bit this time with the with the bit facing down. And I will go ahead and make a new grid. Now I can do this kind of wherever I like, but uh, typically I like to do the first two axis on the one that makes the most sense for my case. So I'm going to do it on the long axis, or I'm going to do it on the bottom axis, I think. So I'm going to lower this down until I can touch. Uh, make sure your bit's the right size. A light touch. Same thing we did earlier. One, two, and three. And now we have a grid that's aligned this way. Okay, I can still work this way, all good. Uh, we'll go to import and magically that file frame ho 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 is here. So I'm just going to rotate that 90 degrees. Oh, let's go this way. Rotate that to zero and pick the bottom right anchor and blam. There we go. So now this file is perfectly aligned with that. And, you know, it wouldn't be wouldn't be sessions if we didn't at least cut something. Right. So let's go ahead and do a quick Z touch. I'm making sure the bottom of my origins actually over the, the top of my piece. So that way uh, Z touch can actually happen. If, if it's hanging off the piece, that won't work. You actually need to make sure this bottom area is supported by your material. So in this case, I had to be a little bit uh, tricky where it's placed, but uh, we're, we're all good. So now that file's ready to go. Change my this to an engraving bit. I'll ignore the Z-Touch because I just uh, did it. And let's cut. Let's do it. Engraving something like this is super easy because my guess is he's going to use a little combination of uh, auto and auto lock to let Origin do all these fine, fine motions. Anytime we're talking about really fine detail stuff like the, the letters and even the snowflake, let Origin do those fine mo motions by holding that auto button. And of course, if you double click as you're plunging, you make that double click, that will auto lock. So you can let your finger go. And it will the auto will be locked on, and it will continue going until you tap that green button or retract. And you just keep an origin totally still. If you're doing a ton of letters too, and you say, you know, you want to speed things up a little bit, you can, you can fine tune your feeds and speeds in the speeds feature on once you're in the cut menu. As you adjust the auto speed, it will bump that up. Keep in mind, you don't want to go too crazy fast, but something to definitely, definitely play with. I'm hoping that Sean will let me keep this frame. How'd that come out? Let's see, let's see. You know, I didn't really do any tests, but... Well, what's on there? Oh, yeah. You need a... Well, you know, I didn't want it to come off, and there wasn't a whole lot of surface area. That's true. We need a little uh, brush, but actually oh, okay. pretty good, I would say. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, we have a little brush. Uh, so let's see what it looks like a little cleaned up. I love this little brush, actually. It's such a nice little, such a nice little thing. Here we go. Actually, we'll do it on this one. Boom. Ah, we're coming over here. It's a little blurry. <laughs> Boom. Okay. So even the ones I did a little bit faster, uh, not much de degradation from the first couple. 
Um, but, you know. You went a little deep. Went a little deeper than I probably should have. But, you know, I kind of like the deep. It's, I kind of like it. It so. looks sick. Have a very happy holidays, and thank you for joining us. Good night.